Welcome back programmers, Guillaume here. Guess what happened to me? Bill Gates called me. What did he say? Well, I don't know. I couldn't take the call because I was playing the snake and there is no pause feature. So I missed a major opportunity here. Well, okay, Bill Gates never really called me, but I really need to add this pause feature in the game. Well, we never know. So I'm going to do that in three steps. First, I'm going to do a refactoring of the code, as usual. Then I'm going to make side development here. I'm going to make the uh, game look much better by adding a picture, an image as the background and changing the board to be semi-transparent. And finally, I will add this expected pause feature. So let's have a look. Okay, back into the code, so the snake. Uh, so three things we are going to do. First, we're going to refactor the code to extract some procedures, extract some code to put in specific procedures. It's gonna make the uh, pause and the state machine thing uh, much easier. Second thing, I want to display a background, background picture with the transparent board. And finally, the pause feature and the state machine. So let's start with the refactoring. First thing I want to do is, you see how in this procedure here, the procedure list tool, we see uh, the lines with the, the dashes. Well, that's because something I learned recently is that if you start a comment with semicolon, well, of course you start a comment with semicolon, but if you start the comment with a dash, it will make sure that it appears in the description in the uh, procedure list here so here if i if i were to type something anything uh, description here okay i cannot type of course description here you would see description as a description in the procedure so if you if you want to add some information in this procedure list for example if you if you want to separate the different procedures with you know, blocks or kind of text that explain uh, the different blocks of procedures, then you can use this dash, uh, semicolon dash keyword or gimmick. Uh, so instead, I want to replace that with a something else because it's just decoration for me. I just want to separate that. So what I want to do is I basically want to replace this. Control F. Oops replace with not whole word only i just want to replace with stars okay so i'm copy pasting from here and i want to replace all like this and you see now we don't see anything only the procedures in the procedure list first then as i said i want to extract code because most of the code is look at that all in the main procedures it's really ugly not ugly it's really ugly. Uh, so we want to extract uh, parts of this. So first, the uh, window setup. So I'm going to add a new procedure, extract the code here, just putting it right there. Up, procedure open game window. And that contains exactly what is here. So I can remove or replace this by calling open game window that's the first one also what i want to do is in, in this open game window maybe you saw the comments uh, in the video the previous video uh, on the snake but these three lines these three lines here are not the correct way to hide the cursor that works that actually works only on windows but someone told me that we could do that a little bit differently and that's by calling examine mouse the side effect the examine mouse works exactly the same as the examine keyboard you should call it every time you need to check if one button has been clicked or two or if the mouse has moved etc in your game but here we don't want to play with the mouse we just want to hide the cursor and the side effect of the examine mouse is to hide the cursor. So we're going to use this side effect. But to use examine mouse, you need to here 
initialize the mouse first and that is done next if we go again uh, in the uh, main procedure we want to extract the creation of the sprites so let's remove this okay and create put that into a new procedure so i'm doing some copy pasting right here right below here okay create sprites and it's exactly the same code so here i need to call create sprites okay then loading the sounds okay initializing the game okay so i want also to just to use macros for example we could transform that into a macro so let's do this and you'll see i will show you something if i turn this into a macro so let's put it after the variables here macro empty message queue exactly the same calls and we pass a parameter complex macro and you see the macro here in the procedure list is you can see the macros because they have a plus sign in front of their names so we have the macro empty message queue so we can go back in the main window right here and replace all this by calling the macro with the event nope nope event like this okay flip buffers fine then what i want to do is also replace this whole code here before drawing the background the preparation basically i'm preparing the frame preparing all the uh, game logic to build my frame i'm not drawing the frame i'm just preparing it so i call this uh, prepare frame okay so let's extract this okay so just before the main once again i try to keep the same order so exact, exactly the same code i'm also using snake cell current time next head uh, this time they are local variables prepare frame and i'm doing the same code so here in the main i can remove snake cell i can remove um, current time and i can remove the next head and i can replace this all this by just a call to prepare frame here i change a little bit the if blocks so here i need to reindent that so after preparing the frame i'm drawing the frame first drawing the background then the snake then the the apple and i want also to put all this inside a procedure co called draw frame of course so here i'm going to call it directly draw frame i'm preparing the frame first and i'm drawing the frame same order again right above the main procedure okay draw frame draw background display sprite etc okay and finally i want to put all the keyboard management into one single procedure that will stop here that will do the examine not and not the examine keyboard i leave the examine keyboard in the loop i remove all this and i keep the of course the end of the loop the until keyboard push instead i'm going to call a procedure and all keys i'm not changing any code by the way i'm just really replacing code here right here so i can adapt the indentation by the way here control i and you see it's exactly the same code just the tmp speed uh, variable that i put in this procedure instead of putting in the main procedure so i need to remove it i can remove it from here because it's not used anymore in there and i think this current time elapsed millisecond is not part of this as well 
I forgot that. It is just within this prepare frame. See, current time equals. So the main procedure now looks like this. Open game window, create sprites, loads the sounds, initializes the game, then the main repeat loop, the main loop, emptying the message queue, flipping buffers, preparing and drawing the frame, examining the keyboard, and then handling the keys until I press escape and the game is over. So, yeah, I can add some, that's what I did actually right there. I can add some small comments here, open the window. Okay, it's really redundant, so I should not do that, by the way. It's create the sprite and the procedure is called create sprites. It's, it's well, I don't like that. Uh, flipping buffer, prepare frame, draw frame, and handle keys. I can just remove the blank line here. Check if a key has been pressed. Nope, we're going to call that manage keyboard, keyboard events. And that is it for the refactoring. Let's try this. It should be exactly the same game. Snake works. We have our music. I can eat apples. I can pause the music with the M key. I can pause the sound effects with the F. And I can quit. Let me die first. Okay. And I can quit with the escape. Great. Exactly the same game. And you see, I can, I will restart it again. The fact that the cursor disappears, the cursor here in the middle of the screen, the game starts, no cursor anymore. The examine mouse works perfectly. Okay. Step one. Step two, displaying a picture a nice picture um, as a background. So I want to see the whole picture and on top of the picture, a semi-transparent background, no, a semi-transparent board and the snake will uh, move on the semi-transparent board. So I have downloaded a picture on Unsplash. Let's have a look. Okay, very nice picture here. Uh, okay, just, I like this landscape. Very, I don't know, I like this picture. Whatever, so background. So I want to display this image. It's a PNG uh, image. So what do I need to do? Well, I need to add this PNG image decoder. So here, use PNG image decoder oops that's the first one and i need to do some changes uh, in the way the, the background sprite is created and displayed so let's do that i need to create some sprite here so bg is going to be the background so the picture and i need a new sprite for the board so let's call it sprite board and also the board is drawn, remember, orange border and dark and light blue for the tiles. So I want the tiles and the border to be transparent. So I need to put some, ha some alpha channel in the colors. So I, need I will add here an alpha channel. Remember when you talk about, uh, when you express colors as hexadecimals, it's alpha b g r blue gray uh, green red so alpha is the first two letters so the first uh, byte and here i'm not putting i'm putting bb which is almost um, opaque but a little bit transparent so dark blue we could call this semi transparent dark blue semi transparent Come on, less dark blue, yes, and semi-transparent orange. That's for the colors. So now let's build those sprites. 
So of course, the background is going to be easy in the create sprite. I need to load just the picture, the photograph. Okay, load sprite, sprite background, background.png. And I'm using this flag alpha blending to be sure that the uh, when you draw above it, it will use the alpha channel. Okay, now the sprite for the background is not the sprite for the background anymore. It's the sprite for the board. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm not going to draw the board like a whole rectangle the size of the screen. I just need the size of the board, okay? So I need to change the dimension of the sprite. So here I need to replace by board and I need to change the dimension. And I need to change a little bit the way the board is created. So let me copy paste the code here. You'll see it's not. Well, I'll explain. Copy here. And I want to replace all this. Create the sprite for the board. So as I said, I replaced here sprite BG by sprite board. So now the size of the board is board width plus twice the border width okay same for the height born height plus twice the border width okay and i'm also using alpha blending because i want it to be transparent i'm starting to draw drawing mode i need to put that because i want to draw on all channels alpha r g and b what am i drawing first i'm drawing the border so i'm drawing a box from zero zero to board width plus twice the border width so the, i'm covering the whole surface of my sprite with orange color, semi-transparent orange. And then I need to punch a hole because I don't want to see the orange through the, uh, the tiles. I just want to see the tiles. So I need to punch a hole. So far at this line, I have a sprite that is the size of the board, but completely trans semi-transparent orange. So I need to punch a hole the size of the actual uh, board uh, inside to make it sure that we don't see the orange through the tiles. So how do you punch a hole in a picture? I'm switching here the drawing mode to alpha channel. So when I do that, the operations after that are going to apply only on the alpha channel. And I'm going to, to, to draw a square that is fully transparent in the middle. And here, that's what I'm doing. I'm creating a box so drawing a square of border width uh, border width border height dimensions and I'm x and y is border width border width so I'm starting inside at border width border width and the color is zero but what interests us is the zero here which is fully transparent so I'm drawing a fully transparent square within my orange square that punches a hole in my square I'm, drawing, I'm putting back the drawing mode to uh, all channels and then I can draw my uh, tiles. So just the same way, except that instead of the, 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 the bounds of my iterations are a little bit different. The step is the same, the box is the same, etc. It's just that we iterate from border width to border width plus board height minus square size, etc. Have a look. It's not really different. It's just this punching hole here with these two comments here. A little bit different and the dimensions also are a little bit different so here now we have our background sprite which is the picture and our board sprite which is just the board and we need to display them somewhere where well we have a procedure draw background draw background right here and we are going to replace that here I don't want this. I'm displaying the transparent sprite background, so the picture, and I'm displaying the transparent sprite board. So the picture, it, because it takes the whole size. Yes, I, I recite, I did not tell you that, but I recite my PNG just to be the 640 by 360 dimension of my screen. So it will fit perfectly. And I could have resized it um, in the code, but instead I did resize it uh, directly 
in uh, an image uh, processing software, maybe using the SIP. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm just loading it as a already with the good dimension. So I'm displaying the sprite right here at 0, 0 for the background and then the board at the correct coordinates, board X minus border width, board Y minus border width to be sure that it will take the border into account. And that is it. We should see a very nice background in the snake game. Let's try this. And voila, look at that. You can see through the tiles, you can see, you can see through the border. And the snake works perfectly. The snake is not transparent. The apple is not transparent. The rest is transparent. That looks very, very nice. I like this. Uh, I like this game. I like the way it looks. Okay, now the pose. Now the pose feature. Okay, how do we do a pose feature? Well, we need to add what we call a state machine because depending on the state, we need to display different things. Okay, so you'll see in the later videos that depending on the state, after you can display a menu, you can display an ending screen, you can display whatever you need. It's just switching states and then the whole uh, algorithmics just make sure that you're display, displaying the correct frames for the correct state. So we need a state. And we need a state, so let's put it a state. Right here. Indeed. We have two states, uh, playing or pause. Yes, you're either playing the game or the game is in the pause state. So I'm putting two states. And I have a global variable that keeps the current state. I call it state. And that's it. It should be an I, by the way. It's a default one, but let's put it. All right, state. Now, I need to manage the state in the main procedure. Yes, to do kind of my state machine. So, right here, instead of this, I will call that state machine. So what do I do? Select state, so depending on the state. If the state is state playing, I prepare my frame and I call it prepare frame playing and I draw my frame playing. So let's rename those procedures here. Prepare fra frame, sorry, playing and draw frame playing. Play on, not playing. Okay, we have our Almost, we have almost, because we need to change some stuff in the handle keys, because we don't want to handle the keys when it's paused, of course. So we need to add a little bit of code. We're going to do another select state here, right here. Select state, and uh, of course the end select at the end. Once again, quick identification control I. okay so here as you see only if i'm playing i need to handle the left and right and, and sound stuff etc but so i can test that this should works the same and it does now i can improve my state machine by actually um, managing the pose because that's what we want to do, right? We want to now manage the pose state. And I'm just calling draw frame pose. I don't have to prepare anything yet. We'll see. So draw frame pose, what does it do? So first, what we are going to do is we are going to do draw frame playing here and right below here 
draw the frame of the game when paused, draw frame paused, and I'm just drawing the same as the frame playing. So it will not look different as a playing frame, except that the snake is not going to move because we are not calling the prepare frame playing. So it's just going to freeze the game and that's it. And then, so we need now to handle the keys to switch between the states, between the pause state and the playing state. But I noticed that I forgot something quickly. It's the initialization of the state. At the bottom here, we need to initialize the state of the game. And I'm starting as playing. So I'm starting in the playing state. So as I said, we need to handle the keys to switch. So I'm going to use the space bar to switch from pause to and uh, to playing. Okay. Pause and resume will be used with the space bar. So let's handle this in the handle keys. Handle keys, I'm going at the bottom here and I'm pasting my code. What does it do? I pasted this. If I am in the playing here, we are in the playing state. If I'm in the playing state and I'm hitting the space bar key, then I'm switched to the state pause and I'm pausing the music. If I'm in a state pause and I hit the space bar, then I resume the game. So I'm putting back to playing state and I resume the music. And I can put the select on the next line. And that should work for the pause. Okay, let's have a look. Game runs. I need to hit space bar. Yeah, that works. Space bar again. It resumes. I like that. Space bar. Space bar. Perfect. That works perfect. That works perfectly. But we cannot see the difference between the paused game and a normal game, except that it's not moving. But I want to add some sort of layer some sort of yes uh, tinted window kind of look transparent black transparent with some indications on top and the same i came up with a pose png so i draw that i drew that myself look at that so i took uh, some software here and drew this already transparent png pose Press space bar to resume, quit, and some okay. The um, reminder for the shortcuts: quit, escape, pause, resume, space bar, toggle music M, toggle sound effects F. So we're just going to display this screen on top of the playing frame, and that's going to be our pause frame. So this is called pause.png. So what we need to do, you know that already, we need to create a new sprite that we are going to display on top. So we are going to call it sprite pose. And, and we are going to load in the create sprite. I'm going to put it at the bottom here. Load sprite. I'm loading the sprite pose, loading the pose.png image, alpha blending. Of course, we want to display the alpha channel as well. And then I need to display this sprite in the draw frame pose procedure. Draw frame pose is right here. So what do we do? We do that. Oops. Why do I have an, an extra? E, I don't know. Display. So when I'm drawing the frame pose, I'm drawing the frame playing. So exactly the same. But instead, on top of it, I'm displaying the transparent sprite, sprite pose at 0, 0. And the image as the background as already the correct size 640 by 360. That will not work if you were to go at the top of the game here and change the dimensions here. I know. But let's have a look at... Uh, the result because that's the end so we need to test the new game let's do that f5 
the game works. Sound effects. Let's pause, right? Wow! <laughs> Look at that! Pause screen, transparent black, press space bar to resume, the shortcuts. Wow, that looks professional. Well, at least. Almost. Okay, look at that. The sound F. That works. M. That works. Okay, I'm not gonna play too long, but <laughs> I could. I really could. That looks very nice. I could sell this one, right? No, not yet. I cannot sell this game yet, and I'm not sure I will because you have the source code right here. I'm gonna do more uh, episodes on this snake game, but so far that's it for the pause feature and the background image. And voila, done! I can pause the game, so now Bill, you can call me. Uh, remember, on my pure-programming.com website you can still download the Pure Basic Cheat Sheet. It will help you if you keep that next to you when you're coding Pure Basic. I'm just giving that in exchange for your email address. And as usual, if you enjoy this video, drop a like. You can subscribe to the channel right here. Check out the social media right there and the latest video right here. That being said, thank you all for watching. I will see you soon.